Ready for 1992. You think this club is ready to go? I think so. The players were getting awfully antsy in spring training. I think you reach a stage in spring training where everybody wants to get the practice over with and let's play for real. A couple of big questions. Is the starting rotation going to be intact? Yes, it is. Tom Glavin is ready to go tonight. How about David Justice is back? Well, he's in the lineup, so I think they're ready to kick it off. Meanwhile, down on the field, our old friend and partner Pete Van Weeren with a new guy, our fourth broadcaster, a guy you're really going to enjoy hearing this year. Let's send it to Pete. Professor? Thank you, Skip, and let us first of all officially welcome Joe Simpson, our newest Braves broadcaster, to the broadcast team. And Joe, you and I had a chance to uh, spend a good part of spring training in West Palm Beach watching this ball club. What are your observations for this team trying to defend a National League title? Well, Pete, even though uh, I'm a new guy around here, it was obvious to me to see this spring, in spite of the rough spring, how obvious it was that this ball club won last year on good pitching and solid defense. Yes, the bats were cold, but keep in mind that last year the club started off very cold in April. In fact, they won only eight of their first 18 ball games. So it's a long season. If the ball club starts off a little cold this year, I don't think there's anything to worry about. And who knows? Maybe Tom Glavin can break that personal jinx. He's 0-8 lifetime against Houston. He'll try to change that tonight. Skip and Don will be back with the starting lineups and all the action right after this. Don TBS. Houston, the Astrodome. Yes, there are trees growing in Texas. That's outside of the Astrodome. Skip Carey, Don Sutton with you from inside the Astrodome where we're about set to kick off the 92 season. Bobby Cox has turned in his lineup card, and here was what was written on it. Deion Sanders will lead off. He'll play center field. Terry Pendleton starts at third. He'll be at bat second. Then it's Ronnie Gann in left field hitting third. David Justice will be the right fielder. David will bat in the cleanup slot. Hitting fifth and playing first, it's Sid Bream. Jeff Blauser in place of Mark Lemke at second. Jeff will hit sixth. Then it's Greg Olson, seventh behind the plate. Rafael Belliard at short will bat eighth. And Tom Glavin will start, and he will bat ninth. Defensively for the Astros, this is how they will line up. Gonzalez in left, Finley in center, in Cavilia in right. The infield has Caminiti at third, Cedeno at short, Biggio at second, Bagwell at first. Scott Service starts behind the plate. And on the mound, a pretty good right-hander, Pete Harnish. You see his numbers from last year. He was a part of the trade that sent Glenn Davis over to, to Baltimore. And he became the anchor of this Houston Astros pitching staff. Fastball slider changeup. His best pitch is a fastball up in the strike zone. And he pitched well against the Braves last year. There are your Turtle Wax Clear Coat starting lineups. And here are the umpires. Doug Harvey, the veteran, will be behind the plate. And there are others. At first, it's Jerry Crawford, Charlie Williams at second, and Jerry Davis will be at third. We're about set to get underway, and once again, to kick off the 1992 season for you, here is Skip Carey. Okay, Don, thanks very much. Harnish is out of Comic, New York, lives now in Belmar, New Jersey. He was 12 and 9 last year, an outstanding earned run average, 2.70. In the other baseball this afternoon, the Cubs beat the Phillies 4-3. McElroy got the save. Greg Maddox the win. Mark Grace a two-run homer. Terry Mulholland was the loser. In the fourth inning now, Cincinnati and San Diego are tied 2-2. We've been watching that game here. Fred McGriff has a two-run homer. Bill Doran has hit one for Cincinnati. Harris and Browning are pitching that game. New York at St. Louis. Just getting underway on the Giants and Dodgers later on. In the junior circuit, the Yankees beat the Red Sox 4-3. Roger Clemens took the loss. Scott Sanderson got the win. And the other action, a limited schedule tonight. Speaking of limited schedule, the Braves here again tomorrow night, then come home for four against the Giants starting Thursday night. We're told the weatherman has been most cooperative for Thursday evening. And a big crowd will be gathered at the ballpark as the Braves will get their National League Championship rings on Thursday night in a pregame ceremony. Harnish 2 and 1 against the Braves last year. Glavin has never beaten Houston. He's 0 and 8 against them. And the Braves are 0 and 6 on opening days against the Astros since the Houston franchise came to the National League. Glavin's numbers somewhat misleading, especially last year. He allowed the Astros five runs in something like 25 innings, but yet come away 0-2. So he did his part. He just got no runs to play with. Deion Sanders had a good spring, and he'll lead it off for Atlanta. Good news that David Justice is in the game. Mark Lemke still bothered a little bit by that hamstring pull, and they don't want to take any chances, so Jeff Blauser starts 
for the Braves at second, and the season is underway. And Dion pops it up. Caminiti gives chase. So does Cedeno. Nobody can get there, and it's 0-1 on Dion Sanders. Tomorrow night's game will be on Braves Radio as well as Sports South. John Smoltz against Mark Portugal. Uh, there's been a change. Daryl Kyle will start. Portugal, Portugal is in the six, hospital. Still. He's still in the hospital. That was just announced uh, in the background. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome, Skip. Didn't take me long to screw up this year, did it? The pitch. <laughs> right through there. Fast ball. It's 0 2. Harnish very pleased with his control this spring. Into the dirt, a ball and two strikes. Well, that was the only thing that kept him from really being a star in the American League. They loved his stuff over at Baltimore, but he would have some years where he would walk as many as he would strike out, and he would get some games where he'd fill up every column as you looked across the scorebook. Line, center field, base hit. So Dion, behind him the count, one and two, rips a single, and that'll get everybody jumping around. Service the young catcher has to have a little butterflies now as Terry Pendleton comes to the plate the most valuable player a year ago Sanders at first with nobody out Dion led the club in stolen bases this spring and if you're wondering about Harnish's move he is pretty quick to first but when he starts to go home pretty high leg kick and if you can pick out when he's going to home and to first you can really steal on him. Well, let's see if we're about to have the first throw to first of 92 in a Braves game. Not yet. Pendleton was going to bump that almost went to the backstop. One ball, no strikes. A little surprised by that maneuver. I think he was just taking a look at the pitch and giving Dion a chance to take a look at his motion. I don't think the sacrifice was on in this situation. Now time called and Pendleton. Figures if they're going to pitch him inside, he'll get a little protection. Yeah, a little <laughs> wristband action. <laughs> And he returns to home plate. Well, one guy we really miss here tonight is Dave Persley, the Braves' longtime trainer, recovering some with some from some back surgery in Atlanta. I know he's looking in. Dave, we hope to see you soon, man. Jim Lovell called up from the Braves' Triple A club to assist Jeff Porter while Dave is ailing. A ball, no strikes. The count. Big lead by Dion. Anytime you see a runner with the foot out on the turf, you know he has a big lead. There he goes. Loops into center field. Finley comes on. He gets there. He's going to get a double play with a good throw. And he did. I don't know if Sanders got deep, but he made a bad base running play, and two are out. A good play by Finley getting a jump on it. I don't think Sanders was deep. This wasn't a hit and run. It was a straight steal. So on a straight steal, you're pretty much running head down. Good job by Bagwell on the back end of this play. Not only did he had to get out of the way of the sliding Sanders, but he had to keep his eye on the ball and come up with the play. Just credit the Astros with a good defensive play on that one. Ronnie Gant against the Astros last year hit 295 with three homers, 14 RBI. He bats here with two out, nobody on. Had a good cut, fouled it back, nothing and one. Harnish is a type pitcher, Skip, that is perfect for a ballpark like the Astrodome. His fastball upstairs moves, and it's really hard for batters to get on top of it and drive it. You will see him give up a lot of fly balls to left and right center field. They can't make up their mind what they want to do with this ballpark. Now they've brought the fences in again. They've lowered the fences about 19 feet. 325 down the line, 375 in the alley. Center field is still the same, but all they've done is shorten the dimensions of what is still going to be a good pitcher's part. That ball is well hit to left field, but Gonzalez is there, and the inning is over. So the leadoff single comes to nothing for Atlanta. We go to the bottom of the first. Braves nothing. Houston coming to bat. in their half of the first Astros coming up and here's how they'll line them up Greg Biggio will bat in the leadoff spot he'll be followed by Steve Spinley and Jeff Bagwell will hit third <laughs> Pete Incavillo will bat cleanup then it's Ken Caminiti and Luis Gonzalez 
Scott Service will hit in the seventh spot. Andohar Cedeno a bat eight, and Pete Harnish will hit ninth. Braves defense will see Gant in left, Sanders in center, Justice in right. Pendleton at third, Belliard at short, Blouser at second, and Bream at first. Greg Olson behind the plate. Tom Glavin coming off of his Cy Young year last year gets the opening nod for the Braves tonight. And this is not unfamiliar seeing Glavin and Olson work together because Greg Olson caught Tom Glavin last year in all but about two innings of the 246 he worked. Bivia leads it off. Former catcher, now the second baseman. There's a look at the Atlanta backstop. Spinley. He's batting second. Steve Finley. Finley. Not Steve Spinley. Glavin ready to go to work. The Cy Young Award winner a year ago, but again, that's last year. Downstairs, one ball, no strengths. The Houston people think Bijou is going to be okay at second. He's now at the stage, they say, where he'll make an absolutely sensational play and then really butcher one, and that's to be expected. A strike right through there. A ball and a strike is the count. Well, you don't have to watch him very long to see that he is a good athlete, and you can take a good athlete and move him around on the field. The change stays outside. Two balls and a strike. Biggio last year was four out of five against Glavin. He's a 333 hitter against him like that. That's low, and it's three and one. Uncharacteristic control problems for Glavin here. Normally in a game, it's uncharacteristic, Skip, but if you watch Tom last year, he struggled in the first and second inning in over half of his ball games. He was good enough to overcome that for the last seven. High fly ball, well hit right field. Justice, a long run. He's there, one up. Bezio hit it pretty good, but Justice was equal to the task, one away. And here is Steve Finley, the center fielder. Batting second in the Astro lineup. Finley came over along with Harnish in the Glenn Davis trade a year ago. And that trade to this point has been sensational for Houston because of the unfortunate injuries suffered by Davis last year at Baltimore. A strike at the knees, it's 0 and 1. The third member of that trade, Kurt Schilling, has been shipped on to Philadelphia. Can't remember the name of the player. A guy, a hard throwing right handed starter. But Houston felt like they had too many right handed relievers. Phillies thought they had too many right handed starters, hence the perfect match for a trade. Breaking ball, base hit, center field. So Finley, who runs well, is aboard with one out. And Jeff Bagwell will be the hitter. Bagwell, a good solid year for Houston last year, but the Red Sox wish they still had this guy. 15 homers, 82 RBIs, a 294 average, 116 strikeouts. He'd like to cut that down. Renner at first, one out. They got him for the veteran right-hander Larry Anderson. Double play ball, maybe five, four, three, and the inning is over. So each team turns a double play in the first inning. One hit, no runs, no airs, and nobody left at the end of an inning. No score. Here, David Justice will lead it off for Atlanta. It will be Justice, Bream, and Blouser against Pete Harnish in a scoreless game after an inning. Well, we almost, it looked like, had our first little set two of the year. Barry Larkin hit by a pitch by Harris, the San Diego pitcher, and had some words for him as he made his way down to first base. If you're wondering how we know that, we, for some reason that we have not yet determined, <laughs> have that game on one of our TV sets up here. We don't know how to turn it on. Justice will lead it off. Biggio plays him in short right field. Hot shot. He pulled it hard, but foul took a shot at his first base coach, Pat Corrales. Jimmy Williams is coaching at third. 
you the Braves last year, excuse me, Don, 13 and 5 against Houston. You mentioned Biggio playing in short right field. They have a modified version of the shift against Justice. It's interesting, though, in the outfield, they don't play him as much to pull as they do in the infield. He pulls another one past Corrales. Same spot. It's 0 2. You get a guy like Justice up there, it takes a little guts, but Harnish is doing it. If you throw a couple of off speed pitches inside, like on the inside corner, you can get two quick strikes. The danger is if you miss out over the plate, you get a one run deficit. He's ahead of him 0-2. Let's see what he comes up with here. Got him. Off speed pitch on the outside edge. First strikeout for Harnish. One away in the Atlanta second. Sid Bream will be the batter. One, two, three. All three change ups, two inside, and this one down and away in a perfect spot of pitcher's pitch. Not much that Justice could have done with that, but that's not unusual to see Harney striking people out. You see what the opposition batted against him last year. Bream stands in there. High and away, one ball, no strikes. Don Sutton, Skip Carey with you from the Astrodome. I pop left side. Caminiti gives chase. He'll have no play. It's in the seats. They do not have a sellout here in Houston, but better than 30,000 on hand in the dome tonight. They play Bream straight away in the outfield and pretty much straight up on the infield, too. High and away, Doug Harvey, boy, he's called a lot of balls and strikes in his career. To the screen. Doesn't take you very long to see Harnish's pitching pattern. He's going to try to keep him off stride with the changeup, the lefties. He's going to do that to the righties with his slider, but when he's going to throw a fastball, it's going to be up and away. And what he is saying to the hitters, even with the shortened dimensions, I defy you to hit it out the opposite way. The 2 2 pitch. Popped him up, foul, and out of play. Service gives it a look, but it's in the seat. Jeff Blauser waits on deck. Good eye by Bream and a full count as the result. It's three and two. Bream last year two out of 11 against Pete Hunter. Popped him up. Service gives it another look. That was a fastball in on his hand. And you see what the Astrodome does to a pitcher. In a place like Chicago or in Atlanta or a number of other good hitters ballparks, 3-2, you've got to try to make a perfect pitch. You've got to try to get him out. Here, you can take a shot with a high fastball knowing that very few people are going to hurt you straight away in this ballpark. He's going to come with a heater again. And he missed with it outside, and a runner is at first with one out for Blouser. You should have heard Leo Mazzone before the game down on the Braves bench moaning about it's not fair to the pitchers. They lower the fences and move them. <laughs> yeah, didn't he say next thing they'll want to know what's coming? Yes. I think he did make that <laughs> remark. Last year, Harnish was 7 and 4 here with a 2.41 earned run average. He pitched well on the road, 2 5 and 5 with a 3.05. Check, swing, strike, breaking ball to Blau, 0 and 1. We are scoreless in the second inning. Don Sutton, Skip Carey with you. Pete Van Weeren, Joe Simpson will be along at the midway point in the game. Ernie Johnson and Chip Carey will have tomorrow night's game on Sports South, and then we'll be back with you Thursday night in Atlanta against the Giants. A ball and a strike. Blouser checks out Jimmy Williams, his third base coach. They play Jeff straight away in the outfield. Biggio cheats him up the middle a little bit. At second base. 
on the outside corner. A ball and two strikes. The ability to spot a breaking ball allows you to make pitches like that. He had shown Blauser two good sliders. Now all of a sudden pops that fastball on the inside corner. Chances are behind in the count. That's right where Jeff would have been looking for it. A ball and two strikes, one on, one out. Downstairs, it's two and two. Again, Blouser checks out Jimmy Williams. Well, if it's a running play involving Sid Bream, it has to be hit and run. He didn't steal a base last year, and chances are he's not going to steal too many this year. Got him with a breaking ball. Blouser out on strikes, two down. Second strikeout for Harnish, bolts in this inning. Harnish is starting up this season right where he left off. Good command of his breaking stuff, working both sides of the plate with his fastball, and then a good two-strike pitch with the slider. Starts it out about the knees and then breaks it down just below the strike zone. So Greg Olson stands in. This is a spot where Greg did some of his best hitting, actually with the runner in scoring position, but he was one of the best two-out hitters on the ball club last year. I hope Bream steals second just to embarrass you. Fastball high, one ball, no strikes. Listen, people like him stole enough off of me. It's not going to embarrass me if he steals one when I'm sitting up here. It's hard to concentrate on the runner when you're loading them up, isn't it? <laughs> loading what up? You know what I mean. A conservative lead for Sid at first base. Foul to the screen. It's one and one. Rafael Belliard, the on deck hitter for Atlanta. Middle of the six, the Reds lead the Padres 4 2 tonight. Line left field. Gonzalez on the run. He's there, and the inning is over. Olsen hit it right on the nose, but Gonzalez got a good jump on the ball and made the catch. Nothing doing in the second. No hits, no runs, no errors. A walk and one left. Bottom of the second rolls round. No score. Well, the telecast this year are authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club. And are intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, description, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. And we go to the bottom half of the second inning, and Pete Incavilia will lead it off for the Astros. He had a good, solid spring for the Houston team. Well, you use two words there that describe him now good and solid. There was a time when he looked like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Kind of made an interesting statement. He shed about 40 pounds, and he made an interesting statement this spring. He said, gee, nobody ever told me I was out of shape. No mirrors in his house. No, guess not. I can sympathize with him, however. He's got some pop in his bed. you got to be careful with him. And Glavin goes to work, and the curve is outside. One ball, no strikes. He's always struck out an awful lot. But he hits a lot of home runs, drives in a lot of runs. In Cavilla out of Pebble Beach, California. If you watch his stats, Skip, last year he hit about 20 points lower against lefties and did not hit a single homer against left-handers in the American League. Popped up foul. Olsen gives it a look, but he'll have no play. Had a little trouble picking the ball up. And that can happen to you in this ballpark. In his major league career in Cavilla in 791 games has struck out 880 times. That is a lot. But a lot of home runs, too, as you see. The wine. Base hit center field. He was off stride, but he kept his hands back and just served it into center field for a leadoff single. Caminiti will hit. Caminiti is a guy who has 
He's a good, solid Major League ball player, but he has not turned the corner like the Astros felt he would. They thought he was going to be an outstanding hitter. He still may be. But last year he hit 262 with just four homers and 50 RBIs. Hit just 222 against the Braves a year ago. Change for a strike outside corner. Nothing and one. We're scoreless in the bottom of the second. Braves play 12 of their first 16 games on the road. People have tried to talk Caminiti into maybe abandoning batting left hand. He's a natural right handed hitter. He hit 100 points higher from this side than he did from the left side last year. He had a good cut there, but he fouled it back. He was 0 for 10 last year against Tom Glavin, 6 out of 27 in his career. One of those hits a homer. He missed outside. Renner at first, nobody out. Bottom of the second, no score. To Pendleton again. Out there. Beat it at first base. Caminiti just did beat the rep. Blouser didn't get much on the throw because Incavilia was down there in better shape than I thought he would be. Well, that had one of those in-between hops that Pendleton had to back up on a little. He got the ball to Blouser in time, but as you pointed out, Incavilia was there. It wouldn't have been a surprise to see Caminiti hit into a double play. He led all third basemen last year in the National League in grounding into those. Luis Gonzalez is the batter. This guy's got a chance, doesn't he, to really be a good hitter. You watch, or you talk to scouts about him, and when people watch him hit, they use one term to describe him. He has a sweet stroke. He had 254 last year, drove in 69 runs. But the first two months of the year, I don't think he hit over 120. And I don't think he hit very much against lefties either. He really struggled. Did a pretty decent job against right-handers. Threw up a lot of extra base hits. But left-handers ate him up last year. As pictured there. 0 oh and 1 is the count. Scott Service, the catcher, is on deck. The 0 1 pitch to the left hand hitter is forthcoming. Just off the end of the bat. He had a pretty good cut, however. It's 0 and 2. That's one thing this this kid is very fortunate Don I think and timing is sometimes everything in life you come to a ball club that's in a rebuilding process and you can start the year at 120 for six weeks because if they believe in you they'll stick with you because they don't think they're going to win anyway and that's really what they did with this young man last year and he responded the second half a lot of these guys got their last year minor league experience at the major league level. Glavin records his first strikeout of the night. That's a textbook on pitching. Breaking ball away, breaking ball away, fastball right under the hands. Look at the swing. You see he's got a good cut, but he has never been comfortable against lefties, and it could have been demonstrated any better than right there. So Scott Service checks in. Young right hand headed catcher who's been sort of handed the job here. He and the youngster from Cleveland, Tobin City. Well, they talk about the pressure being on Biggio to play well at second. I think there's more pressure on this kid to catch well because he knows that he is the one guy, if he does a good job, that frees up the Astros to move Biggio to second where he can be a better all around player. Runner goes, swung and missed, no chance. Olsen very wisely hung on. He had no chance at all to get Caminiti. He stole that off Tom Gravin. Renner at second with two out and a good play by the by the 
Astro third baseman. Glavin just gave him a look but was coming home all the way. It was one of those times when I'm going to try to fool you by looking at you. But Caminiti wasn't fooled. A running jump. No chance to throw him out. Very wisely, Greg Olson didn't complete the throw. Oh, and one the count to Scott service. Downstairs, it's even now a ball and a strike. That steal of second by Caminetti tells you that the Astros have already, or even through last year, have learned to read something in Tom Glavin's delivery that tells them when he's coming home. And that man right there is one of the best in baseball at picking up tendencies from pitchers. That being Art Howe. Matt Galanti, one of his coaches in front of Art there. There's the change, and service was out in front. So it's a ball and two strikes, and Glavin, a pitch away from getting out of this inning, if he can get service here. The first beach ball of the night has reached the playing surface here in Houston. That's what that booing was about. You might have heard in the background. He popped him up on the infield. Belliard is there, and Glavin should be out of the inning. He is. One hit, no runs. No errors, one left at the end of two. No score. What does it take to be a mountain? I'm a winningest manager. The question in the top of the inning, the answer in the bottom half. Unless you so desire, oh, great one, to give it right away. Well, I mean, it's so easy. <laughs> Raphael Belliard will lead it off for Atlanta as we go to the third. No score. Harnish and Glavin hooked up in a good one. Belliard, a pleasant surprise last year. He did exactly what the Braves hoped and expected him to do defensively, but he got a lot of big hits for this ball club. Hey, on Saturday night when the Giants are in town, it's Tomahawk night. First 35,000 fans to enter the game with a reserve seat ticket will receive a Braves Tomahawk. Belliard pops one out of play. That's why they're calling it Tomahawk night, I guess. It's compliments of Anheuser-Busch. That's Saturday night. The Giants are in on Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. There are a few other things that are happening. Yes, the home opener, fireworks and all that. And the magnetic schedules that just slap right up on your refrigerator on Sunday afternoon. Shop to short. Andrew Harcedeño has it. Throws him out. One away. That's a big question mark for the Houston team. Is that kid at shortstop? If he can catch the ball and throw it it'll really help their club but when you rely on your pitching in a ballpark like this you really need good defense his reputation uh, skip is that he can catch it and throw it but every now and then likes to put a little extra flair to it we saw him near the end of the year down in uh, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium try to zing a couple over there and ending up uh, costing his club a, a couple of ball games Tom Glavin a pretty good hitter for a pitcher he hit that ball hard but it's hooking foul into the seats nothing and one no score, third inning. Steve Avery wanted us to state publicly on the air that he lays claim this year to the batting title in the pitcher's game that is played every afternoon prior to real batting practice. He did not, however, want us to discuss what I'm about to discuss, which is to congratulate Coach K and his guys for their victory in the NCAA tournament last night Duke University back to back Steve's from Michigan of course Glavin chops another one foul to the left side a ball and two strikes as is John Smoltz who took it a little bit harder than Steve did he was undergoing therapy today trying to recover from it he was huh One and two, the count. Up and in, and it's even now. Two balls, two strikes. After the Giants series at home, 
we go to Cincinnati and then head west. Glavin strokes a solid single. Padres and Dodgers are our other ports of call on that road trip. The Braves have their second hit, third base runner. Deion Sanders started the game with a solid single, was doubled off on a fly ball, however. And Deion is the batter now with a runner at first and one out. And Glavin, if you totally ignore him, will swipe a base on you. He's a pretty good athlete. In fact, he's a very good athlete. Center fielder number 24, Deion Sanders. This Houston team really needs to get off to a good start. They have that monster road trip where they travel over 9,000 miles without coming home. Was it 28 days or something yeah, like that? 26 games in 28 days. 9,300 miles, $1,700 meal money, which will be, I understand, parceled out on a week-to-week -week basis, which is very wise. <laughs> Well hit right field. Now it's not as well hit as I thought. And Cavillia is there. He's got it. Two down. Dion had a good cut at that ball, but it didn't go anywhere. Two away. Lavin still at first, and Pendleton the better. The good side of that bad schedule is that I think they play the first two and a half weeks of the season right here in the dome. First 15, and as you see, 20 out of 26. And not only does their schedule louse them up, it louses everybody else up too. Though. Schedule is a real patchwork this year. Pendleton courts one into deep center field. Finley is back there. So is Gonzalez. They almost collide, but Finley makes the catch and the inning is over. Terry hit that ball well, but he has nothing to show for it. One hit, no runs. No airs and one left. We move on to the bottom half of the third inning. A scoreless game in the Astrodome. It's standing room only. The National League champion Atlanta Braves. Back home and back at it in Atlanta. Get ready for one wild ride. The Braves and the Giants. Three big games. Beginning at 735 Eastern Thursday night on TBS. Dome, a reminder, our Aflac insurance trivia question. What was the question? Who is the Astros' all-time winningest manager? That's right, that's and, oh, great soothsayer, who do you predict? Bill Verdon, old friend of mine, former Cardinal and Pirates center fielder. And once again, you are right on. With an assist from Hal Galena down in the truck. By the way, our crew tonight, our producer is Glenn Diamond, Lonnie Dale is our director, Brad Sheldon, our technical director, our associate director, Lori Brooks, Ashley Gallagher, and the aforementioned Mr. Galena in charge of graphics. And Chris Paris is our EIC. Bottom of the third, Andahar Cedeno will lead it off. I noticed uh, our director, Lonnie Dale, a bit more timid tonight than I have seen him in most of our other broadcasts. Yeah, he prides himself on his dress, but all the Houston officials wore tuxedos tonight, and Lonnie was taken aback, very upset by the whole thing. This kid, Cedeno, hit 303 last year at Tucson. And then 243 with the Astro. He's from the Dominican. Makes his home in La Romana, the Dominican Republic. Wasn't up very long last year. Got the nine homers, all of them, against right handed pitching. Doesn't surprise you that a free swinging, pretty good fielding shortstop comes out of the Dominican Republic, does it? Especially the free swinging part. Boy, they. Rafael Ramirez is still with this Houston club, by the way. First the pitch to Sedania. I think put it best. He said walks don't get you off the island. You got a swing to come over here. One ball, no strengths. Rafi, by the way, had a good spring for the Astros, and he's those of you who followed the Braves for a while and got to know him when he was in Atlanta know what a terrific person he is, and they're using him. Not only because of his baseball skills, but as a steadying influence on this youngster. Pop foul back and out of play. You can see he doesn't get cheated up there. Two balls and a strike. There's Ramirez in the middle of your picture. Nine walks and 74 strikeouts. This young man last year in his short time up here. And you can bet Tom Glavin is aware of that. Two balls and a strike. It's even now two and two. 
old pitching coach and old favorite of mine from Cal from the L.A. days Red Adams used to say if he wants to swing let him just, just don't throw it where he wants it. The 2 2. Kind of like right. that. Turn right and sit down. Strikeout number two for Glavin. You know Don everybody is picking the uh, Cincinnati Reds to win our division. What do you think. Well I think you have to pick them coming out because of the changes they made to make them a more balanced ball club. They're better defensively. But right now their big question is who's going to come on and save ball games for them. So I think right now you'd have to say pretty even up the Braves and the Reds coming out and I think the rest will fall in line. And as as the Braves and Twins proved conclus conclusively last year no matter what anybody thinks this time of the year. It's only knows? speculation. Harnish in the hole 0 and 1. We are scoreless, bottom of the third. Through the fastball by him. He had a good swing, but a little late on that one. He's in the hole 0 and 2. What a swing. But he's alive and it's still nothing in two. Good swing, bad swing, typical pitcher at bat. You can see. <laughs> I don't know what Olsen said, but I wish I did. I know it was funny. <laughs> he might have it not. Blouser will get to it. And throw him out. Harnish gets down the line in good shape. Made it a close play, but he's retired two away. He's taking his hitting too seriously to be a pitcher. I mean, he went charging down the line. That's the kind of player he is. He's a very aggressive bulldog type man. Did you read some of the comments he made in today's paper? He said, I realize it's opening day, and it's a big thrill to be chosen as the opening day pitcher but all I want to do is get out on the mound and pitch and get all the hoopla out of the way Mike Scott by the way had started the last five opening days for the Astros Mike's arm finally blew up on him and he's out of baseball you mentioned how this ball club has a chance to improve and a guy who is going to anchor it if he does improve is this kid right here who's hitting because that's what he has done each of the past four years. He's gotten better and better as a hitter and he's a real steadying influence on this ball club. He skips the rope to get out of the way. One ball no strength. There's those improved averages. Two and out of the count. How's the new graphics machine working down on the truck, fellas? <laughs> the two open. Over the outside corner, it's two and one. The new graphics machine is playing to mixed reviews in the truck. The two one pitch. Sharp play hit right at Celia. Guns him down, and the inning is over. Glavin works his first one, two, three inning. At the end of three complete, no score in Houston. The Mets and Cardinals had a good game last night. Cincinnati, despite the two run McGriff homer, has a lead. And the Cubs beat the Phils this afternoon. Giants and Dodgers later on. And there's a look at the American League. Roger Clemens took the loss to the Yankees. The other game's not yet underway. Here we go to the fourth inning. Ronnie Gant will lead it off for Atlanta. It will be the heart of the order. Gant, Justice, and Bream stepping in. And here with the play-by-play -play story once again, Don Sutton. All right, Skip, thank you. As even as you can get it. No runs, two hits, no errors for each. Gant, 0 for 1. He flied to left his first time up. Four out of 18 career against Pete Harnish. And this is with the off-speed pitch. It's 1-0. Gant's numbers last year 251 you recall 30 30 again 32 homers 34 steals way out of play in the upper deck even at a ball and a strike not many guys can turn on the ball line he must hit 
50 foul ball home runs a year because of his quick bat. I think that's one of the things Clarence Jones talked to him when he turned his season around last year was you're a quick inside concentrate a little bit on more on the pitches out away which is where they want this one. Pop left side. The service will give it a look but it's 20 rows back it's one and two. You recall last year again oh, there's a look at Clarence Jones and a darn good hitting instructor he is very patient guy has some really good theories and the Braves are buying him and the ones who have have become much better hitters because of him. Gann got off to a slow start yeah last year even up to all star break he was hitting less than 240 and each of the last four years he has been a slow starter. Good off speed pitch from Harnish. Gant's gone. That's strikeout number three for Pete Harnish. These pitchers very similar in that they'll throw their off speed stuff at any time in the count. That pitch is out of the strike zone, but Lanny was committed and couldn't stop the bat. A little bit of an unusual pitch for Harnish, too, because you don't see him throwing that straight change up to too many right handers. That's the first one I can recall seeing tonight. Here's Justice. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. David, two out of ten career against Harnish, does have one home run. Down low, it's one and zero. Oh. Justice missed oh, a month and a half or so last year. Still managed a 275 batting average, 21 homers. Still drove home 87 runs. A very productive year offensively. Down and in, it's two and zero. Oh. Sid Bream on deck. Hard but foul. It's two and one. Donna, a good friend of ours and yours, in the Braves front office, marketing services manager Mary Helen Huggins passed away after a long illness recently, and we certainly want to we'll miss her and we pass along our sympathy to her family. Most definitely. She was a neat lady who was a big help to all of us. Very courageous lady, too. Off the fist. Left side, Caminiti's drawing a bead on it. He's got it very quickly. Two gone in the top of the fourth. That'll bring up Sid Bream. He is one of only three base runners that Pete Harnish has allowed. He walked him back in the second inning. By the way, the justice thing, it makes me a little nervous. You know, he had the back problem last year, and it sort of started this way, just nagging thing day to day. I hope he's all right. You know, the way he explained it to me was that when he hits, and if you watch him hit, he hits against a locked front side. High with the first one to Bream, it's 1-0. and oh. And the doctor was telling him that as long as he hits against it, he's going to strain. It's actually the upper part of the right hip. So it's kind of one of those vicious circle things. Chop right side. Bagwell will feed Harnish. And Harnish has himself another one, two, three inning. Braves go in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, no left. At the end of three and a half, still no score from the Dome. Move to the bottom of the fourth from the Astrodome. No score. Houston due to send up Finley, Bagwell, and Incavilia. Another pitching duel, but that should come as no surprise if you watched the Braves and the Astros last year in their 18 meetings. Ten of the ball games were decided by one run or two runs. Finley has one of the two base hits that the Astros have gotten off Tom Glavin. A one out single in the first. He was erased as Bagwell grounded into a Pendleton to Blouser to Bream double play. Three for six career against Tom Glavin. Pete Guerrero just walked with the bases loaded. Cardinals lead the Mets 4-1 in the bottom of the second. Outside with the breaking ball, 1-0. Finley's rap when he was with Baltimore was that he couldn't handle left-handed pitching. Well, last year he proved that not to be the case. He hit 250 against lefties his first year in the National League. Misses the curveball. It's 1-1. One one. 
They're in the bottom of the eighth up in Cincinnati. They're leading San Diego. Cincinnati, that is, four to two and threatening to add more. Off the fist, out of play, one and two to Finley. You hear Jose Rios line after he gave up the game winning home run to the no, Padres last night? Took a page from a very mediocre movie. He said, well, just blame it on Rio. <laughs> Off the fist, Pendleton will play the one hopper. He'll go to Bream and they get Finley. One gone. He's still a good third baseman, folks. Nice play by Terry Pendleton. One out, here's Jeff Bagwell. Bagwell and Finley are, were two great additions last year, not just because of the fact they posted some good numbers, but because Art Howe could count on upwards to 150 or 160 games out of each of them. Bagwell in there for 156. Threw in 15 homers, 82 RBIs. Rookie of the year, and this young man is tabbed as a future All-Star. Good curveball. Very quickly, Glavin has him 0-2. Boy, he led the Astros in so many categories. Home runs, total bases, RBIs, sack flies, walks. One he's not too proud of, times being hit by pitch. Fists this one out of play. It's still 0-2. You know, there's a stat, and well, of course there's a stat for everything now, but one that I think we don't pay much attention to that's a pretty good one. How many pitches does a batter make a pitcher throw each time up? Bagwell led his club almost four pitches per at bat. That's what he got this time, but he'll make a right turn at the plate. Glavin's got him for strikeout number three. Well, Don mentioned earlier that Glavin, if he struggled, normally struggled earlier, and he's early, and he's getting better as this game goes along. That was off the plate. He made him chase the bad pitch. So Bagwell will go sit down shaking his head. Two gone, and here's in Cavilia. He got a base hit his first time up. Single up the middle. Glavin's fastball is high. It's 1-0. and oh. And Cavilia, a non-roster player, invited down to spring training by Art Howe. Good change up from Glavin. It's a ball and a strike to Cavilia. His career got off to an interesting start. You remember he was drafted by Montreal in the first round, June of 85. He wouldn't sign with him. And eventually Montreal signed him, but traded him to Texas in exchange for a couple of players. Strike two to Cavilia. together some pretty good numbers for Texas 30 homers his rookie season then 27 then he started to slip a little 22 21 24 and only 11 last year for Detroit one thing you could always count on from Pete Incavilia he was going to strike out 155 times high with a fastball it's two and two seems like there's more of that in the American League Rob Deere another guy who strikes out Detroit seems to corner have the corner on the market because Cecil Fielder does too. Good change up another right turn for in Cavilia. Glavin has four now a one two three inning in the fourth. We have completed four in Houston still no score. Back piece of programming on Sports South tomorrow at 830 Eastern Time the Braves and Astros and then on Thursday opening night in Atlanta we'll be right back here on TBS. Uh, Thanks, Skip. The other half of Leo Mazzoni's haircut. <laughs> Many things in life I don't understand. Top of the fifth. One of them is why I would say that. Uh -huh. Why he would wear it like Why he would wear it. Cuts back the wind resistance when you're running. Top of the fifth, no score. Haircut like that, <laughs> you're probably running a lot. <laughs> Blouser Olsen and Belliard do up. The right field. A couple of steps back is in Cavilia. One pitch, one out. Harnish and Glavin making quick work of it. 
Arnish is now set down. Nine in a row. And here's Olsen. Fly to left his first time up. Olsen last year was two out of nine against Harnish, but did uh, deliver one home run against Pete. Low with the fastball, 1-0. and oh. Fastball upstairs, it's 2-0. Oh. That's a mighty large research book you're carrying there, Mr. Yeah, I Carey. Just brought one because you've got about 45 of them over there. I feel left out. 2-0 oh to Greg Olson. Foul back, it's 2-1. and one. Raphael Belliard waits on deck. Who won the New York primaries tonight? Does anybody know? I have no idea. Who's running? Line to left center. On the run is Gonzalez. He's got it. Nice play by the Astros left fielder. So twice Olsen has tried left field. Twice he's come up empty. And with two outs, here's Raphael Belliard. Kip Gary, Don Sutton with you. We will be leaving you at this half, at the end of this half inning, and Pete Van Weert and Joe Simpson will be joining you to take you the rest of the way. Very happy to have Joe with us in Atlanta. He's a good guy and good announcer. Strike one to Bell Yard, and you folks are going to enjoy him, too. He has already made the move and has become an official Georgia resident. He comes to the park too early, though, for me to want to ride with him. He's in the neighborhood. Von Hayes had a two-run homer for the Angels already. Chop foul. It's 0-2 to Belliard. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Doug Harvey will take a look. He says it's okay, son. Throws it back in play. Harnish works from the middle of the rubber. Service wants it away. It's high and away. One and two to Belliard. Belliard has fared pretty well in the brief times he has faced Pete Harnish. Last year he was four out of eight. Hit the ball well his first time up. Grounded to short. Looks like the breaking ball. Swing and a miss by Belliard. So Harnish has now set down 12 in a row. The Braves go in order in the fifth. We have completed four and a half from the Dome. Still no score. Second half of the fifth inning from Houston, opening night 1992. I'm Pete Van Warren, Joe Simpson. We welcome you again to our broadcast crew. Thank you, Pete. And let's clarify a couple of things right away. You are not Suitcase Simpson. That was Harry. Absolutely not. And welcome to real baseball. No designated hitter over in this league. Nor OJ either, but uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Excited about the season getting underway. We've seen some pretty good pitching so far, haven't we? We certainly have. Tom Glav and Pete Harnish both really settling in. And we are scoreless going to the bottom half of the fifth inning. And due up for the Astros, Ken Caminiti, Luis Gonzalez, and Scott Service. Caminiti reached on a force play back in the second, stole a base, and was stranded at second. That's the only Houston runner that's gotten as far as second base in this ballgame. Glavin has set down nine straight. And there's a strike in the outside corner, 0-1. The line on Tom Glavin, who is in mid-season form tonight. This is so typical, Joe, of a game Tom Glavin's pitched against Houston in the past. That 0-8 lifetime record really a misleading number because he's pitched a lot of good ball games against Houston, but very seldom gets any run support when he faces the Astros. Right, he only gave up five runs last year in 21 innings to the Astros. 
That was 0-2. No, no breaks. Fouled away. Still nothing in two on Ken Caminiti. Last couple of innings, he's been so effective with his off-speed pitches. He was having a little bit of trouble throwing his curveball for strikes, but now that he's doing that, it's making his changeup even that much more effective, and that's why he's picked up a couple of strikeouts the last couple of innings, too. Now again, the two-strike pitch on the way to Caminiti, and he got him on the inside corner with a breaking ball. And that's five strikeouts, three in a row now for Tom Glavin. Good pitch. Well, as I said, it was set up with the off-speed pitches on the corners. Big curveball. Caminiti gave up on it a little bit too soon. Look how he gets out on his front foot, his knees buckle. And he gets rung up by Doug Harvey. Now Luis Gonzalez, who was a strikeout victim his first time, his hope this year is that he'll hit lefties a little better. Had a lot of trouble hit under 200 against left-handers a year ago. Nothing in one to count on Gonzalez. I'll tell you what, both pitchers right now just about unhittable. Here's the 0-1 pitch on the way. He started after it, but did not go, says Jerry Davis. One ball, one strike to count now, and Luis Gonzalez. I really think this kid's going to be a star player in this league someday. Yeah, I can see why the Astros are excited about him. He's got a good stroke, and he also has a good arm in the outfield. Here's the 1-1. Breaking ball has popped up, middle of the diamond. Jeff Blauser there for the catch, two down. And that'll bring up the catcher, Scott Service. Nine, Service popped out to short his first time. The Braves and Astros will meet again tomorrow night. That'll be televised on Sports South in the Southeast. And we're back with you for the home opener Thursday night from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. We can't wait. Sold out ballpark, the championship ring ceremonies on the field before the game, big fireworks show after. The pitch on the way to service, ground of the third. Pendleton will have a long throw here, and it's a catcher running, and that's another one, two, three inning for Tom Glavin. Glavin is mowing him down. Twelve in a row he's set down after five, still no score. Town crew decked out in their tuxedos tonight on the 30th anniversary season of the Houston Astros. No score. We're going to the top half of the sixth inning. Joe, I wanted to ask you something about this dome. We have been under the impression for years that the ball in Seattle and Minnesota over in the American League carries pretty well indoors. It has never carried well here in Houston, and I've often wondered why here, why the problem here. Now, you spent all those years with Seattle and visited Minnesota many times. What's your, what's your thought on that? Well, I always thought that the Astrodome was just bigger, Pete. It, its dimensions until this year have been so spacious that it's been difficult to drive the ball out of here. Seattle always had friendly confines because originally the distances down the lines were only like 316 feet. The gaps were only about 355 feet, so that was why there were so many other home runs hitting, being hit there. Tom Glavin, who had a base hit his first time up, takes a ball high, one ball, no strikes. And I think they deny it in Minnesota, but those vents right behind home plate, when they're pumping some air into that dome, I definitely help help the ball to get it in the air. There's a called strike, one on one to count now on Tom Glavin. There's what they've done here, not only bringing the fences in, but lowering them. The height definitely makes the difference down the lines, more so than just the five feet that they've been moved in. Here's the 1-1 one, one on the way, and Glavin picks a foul off to the left, a ball and two strikes. No runs, two hits for Atlanta, no runs, two hits for Houston. We are in the top half of the sixth inning. I guess just about all the renovations are now complete here at the Astrodome. It's taken them about five years, but they've really spruced up the place. The next pitch is taken high, two and two. It's a lot more colorful and a lot prettier than it was the last time I was in this, this dome. Actually, aesthetically a lot better looking than the others. Two balls, two strikes, the count on Glavin. And the 2-2 pitch on the way, taken upstairs for a ball. It's 3-2 and two now. Deion Sanders will hit next. And then Terry Pendleton. Tommy Glavin has one of the only two hit two hits off a harness, and maybe he can figure out some way here to get a board, get something started for himself. It looks like he only needs one run. Here's the payoff pitch now to Glavin. He started to go and did. Strike three. That's five strikeouts for Harnish. And he has set down nine straight. 
We have not had a base runner in this game since the top half of the third inning. Deion Sanders won for two. He led off the first inning with a single. And the third, he flied to right. A ball downstairs, 1-0, oh, the count on Sanders. One of the biggest problems facing the Astros this year and one of their concerns is their defense, especially up the middle. With some young players and some guys being moved around, but so far the Braves haven't tested it. That caught the inside corner. It's one and one now on Sanders. I guess when you're pitching that well, like Harnish is, and getting ahead of the hitters, dragging up a few strikeouts, there's no concern about some ground balls. And Duhar Cedeno had his off moments at shortstop last year. Biggio new to the position of second base, a rookie catcher. The look in by Harnish. And the 1 1 pitch on the way. Little chopper fouled on the first base side. 1 and 2. Scoreless game, top half of the sixth inning. Harnish, who really became a complete pitcher with the addition of that changeup. Ready now for the one two to Dion. High in the air, straight away center. Finley loping in for the catch. And two are out in the sixth. One of those rare nights, Pete, where the infielders only have two assists so far, and the outfielders have one. Finley on the assist in the first inning. A lot of that because Harnish throws a lot of high fastballs. He gets a lot of fly balls, a lot of pop-ups. And he gets away with that fastball as long as it's out of the zone. It looks so good coming out of his hand because the hitters pick it up well. It's hard to lay off of it. Here's Terry Pendleton. He hit into a double play in the first inning, an unusual one. He hit a fly ball to center field. Deion Sanders was running, was doubled up trying to get back to first. In the third, Pendleton also fly to center. He takes upstairs, ball one. Two outs, base is empty. Here's the 1 0. Popped him up. It's going to stay in play for Scott Service and foul territory. And another 1 2 3 inning for Pete Harnish. The duel goes on between Glavin and Harnish. Still no score after five and a half. Into Lakers. It's been a good night for Glavin and Harnish so far here. It really has. Two hits apiece. For Atlanta and Houston, no score. And Andujar Cedeno, a strikeout victim his first time up, leads it off. Glavin has thrown 57 pitches, 42 of them strikes. Harnish has thrown 69 pitches, 44 of them strikes. So both pitchers have excellent control tonight. And it's 0-1 on Cedeno. Now, he is a hitter, Joe, that you don't have to throw a strike to. I'm going to make a prediction that that will not be the last swing he takes this year where his helmet falls off. A free swinger walked only nine times last year. Struck out 74 times. Nothing had won the count. Cincinnati has beaten San Diego. That's a final now, 4-2. The Reds over the Padres, so that series even at one win apiece. And it's nothing in two now on Andujar Cedeno. A couple of positions on this Houston club have not really been won yet. Cedeno's is one of them. They're keeping Rafael Ramirez on this ball club as insurance if Cedeno fails to make it. Likewise, Scott Service is going to have to do something early to hold on to the number one catching job. They've got a kid named Scooter Tucker, who they sent back to AAA, who they're very high on. They almost kept him this year. The next pitch on the way to Cedeno is low. It's a ball and two strikes. That's very often the case with young teams. You give kids a chance, see if they make it. If not, try somebody else. Often the case with a young player with some pop in his bat, too. He never met a pitch he didn't like to swing at. Did he go? No, says Jerry Crawford, two and two. The count on Andujar Cedeno. Pete Harnish will follow. Then the top of the order, Craig Biggio. No score, bottom half of the sixth inning. And a 2-2 pitch on the way. 
He wouldn't chase that one three and two. One of the few times tonight he's gone to a full count on anyone. His last two starts in spring training and here tonight he's done an excellent job when he's been ahead in the count of finishing the hitter off. He doesn't want to lose the eight hole hitter here. It's only the second time he's gone to three balls on a hitter. And he walks at Ohar Cedeno who laid off that high pitch. And that's the first walk issued by Tom Glavin. And as you said Pete maybe the toughest guy in the lineup to walk. Well now we've got a bunt situation here. Sid Bream and Terry Pendleton coming over to talk with Tom Glavin. Pete Harnish will be up there bunting. He grounded out to second his first time up. Harnish got the job done sacrifice bunt wise seven times a year ago. Art Howe really has his pitchers work on their hitting a lot. That is a fair ball down to second goes Olsen got him there over to first not in time. But the Braves cut down the lead runner. As Olsen to Belliard forces Cedeno. One of the most difficult things for a pitcher is not having enough room to bunt when you're on the artificial surface. You can see how Pendleton was right on top of him. He tried to soften it. It didn't even reach the turf and that's why Olsen was able to pounce on it quickly and they almost turned the double play. So now you've got Harnish the runner at first with one out and Craig Biggio the hitter. He's over two. He's fly to right and grounded out to short. A strike in the outside corner. Nothing in one on Craig Biggio playing second base this year for the first time since his senior year in high school. Here's the 0-1 pitch on the way. A little tap to the right side. Bream will have the force play down at second. Belliard back to first, not in time. So two men are down now with Biggio. The runner at first. And Steve Finley will be the hitter. And Biggio might be going in the spot. I think that was a sign right there. The confidence the Braves have in each other defensively. There are a lot of times a shortstop wouldn't even bother making that throw back to first. Knowing the pitcher's going to cover. But as good an athlete as Tommy Glavin is. Belliard made the throw in anticipation that Glavin would get to the bag and he did it throw was late but at least the effort was there to try to turn the double play. So two outs now Biggio at first Steve Finley one for two he had a single back in the first inning. And Glavin will keep an eye on Biggio here with two outs. One thing Tommy does not want to do is make that high leg kick fake that he made on Caminiti earlier that allowed Caminiti such a huge jump on his stolen base back in the third inning. Look at the, look at the second inning. Again he goes over and again Biggio back. One of the reasons they moved Craig Biggio to the infield not because they were displeased with his catching but they thought that all that squatting would take something away from his speed. They tried him in the outfield before they made an infielder out of him. He played a little center field before Steve Finley came along. A little tap it out to second. Blouser to Belliard. And that's it for Houston in the sixth inning. And the duel continues. Pete Harnish and Tom Glavin matching goose eggs. No score through six. It's standing room only. The National League champion Atlanta Braves back home and back at it in Atlanta. Get ready for one wild ride. The Braves and the Giants. Three big games beginning at 735 Eastern Thursday night on TBS. In six one to nothing games. He won two of them. He lost two of them and he had no decision in two of them. So he's been here before. The question I think the Astros had when they came out of spring training was could they outscore their opponents. They knew they would be able to put some runs on the board. They've got some guys that can swing the bat. They were concerned about their defense. They weren't sure how the pitching was going to stack up. But because they added a few veterans like Doug Jones and Rob Murphy, they thought maybe it would help solidify their pitching staff. Well, tonight, if this is any indication, maybe they won't have to score quite as many runs as they expected. Ronnie Gatto for two. Fly to left and struck out. 
A little bit unusual note about this Houston ball club. They had five non-roster players make their 25-man club this year. They had about 16 in camp. Off the foot of Harnish. We'll see if he can run it down. He does. His throw to first, though, scoots by the first baseman, Bagwell. Ronnie Gant will hold on at first. And it'll go as a base hit for Gant off the foot of Harnish. Only the third Atlanta hit. Harnish tried to do this on the base hit by Glavin earlier in the game. This time he's successful, but I'm not so sure that he wanted to be. That was a pretty good shot off the shin. And then he almost compounds things by throwing it, almost throwing it in the dugout. But maybe the Braves can get something started here. They're going to make sure Harnish is okay. Art Howe coming out. He tried to make a skate save on Glavin. He just needed some pads for that one. Well, Tommy Glavin's used to seeing people trying to make skate yes. saves. He was a <laughs> star hockey player in high school. Drafted by the Los Angeles Kings. Harnish is going to throw a couple here, but he appears to be all right. And David Justice will be the batter. The Astros have already had to make a change in their rotation for this opening series. Mark Portugal was supposed to start tomorrow night. Daryl Kyle will replace him. Portugal's got tonsillitis. You can see how he moved his right leg over there to try to knock it down, but... It bounces behind him and now the race is on to try to get to it and make the throw at the same time. Well he's okay he stays in the game Gant the runner at first and David Justice will be the batter. Justice is struck out and popped the third. Let's see if Bobby Cox has Ronnie Gant running here Bobby very aggressive trying to get this team to click offensively the last week or 10 days of spring training. The ball and no strikes on David Justice. Dave Justice tonight has had some good swings on pitches on the inner half of the plate. Anything away, he has struggled to try to reach. I don't know if it's because he's favoring his back a little bit or not, but the off speed pitch away in the first inning, the second inning, resulted in a strikeout, and then he popped one up. Harnish goes to first, and Gant gets back. I watched him in the cage. And Justice seemed to be swinging the bat real well in the cages first two or three times through. Then he had a couple of funny swings and that resulted in some grimaces on his face. I wasn't sure if he was unhappy with the results or if maybe he was feeling a little twinge in his back. He's definitely not 100%. I talked no. to him in the locker room before the game. He said he was going to try. Again, a throw to first. A closer play this time. Braves a little bit banged up early in the year with Justice. Having his back problems. Jeff Blauser is playing tonight, although his right knee still bothers him. Mark Lemke still has a little trouble with the hamstring. And of course, Jeff Treadway and Tommy Gregg both on the disabled list. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way, and he pops it high in the air to right field in Cavilla. In about 10 steps for the catch. Back to first goes Gant, one down. And now Sid Bream, who has walked and grounded out to first. No score. Top half of inning seven. Another left-handed hitter up there, too. Another good opportunity for Ronnie Gann, if he can get a good jump, to get into scoring position. Bagwell holding him over there. And they pitch out on the first pitch. Harnish almost threw a strike there. When you watch the two catchers for Houston, watching them throw in infield practice and in spring training, Cobbinsey to me was the guy who had the better arm. Oh, he's got a two. great arm, yeah. He can really rifle it to second. One ball, no strikes to Sid Breen. He takes a strike outside corner, one and one. And you can see that by that, that he's a little bit slow to the plate, does not do a good job of holding runners on. And did not record a single pickoff all of last year. So he's a guy that Ronnie Gant may want to test here. One ball, one strike, one out. And the pitch before when Ronnie was not going, he had a real wide stance on the cutout and just before Harnish threw over there Ronnie had his feet up under him a little bit more which to me would indicate that he might be breaking here.
Again to first. Almost threw it away. Good set. A balk has been called by Jerry Crawford. And Ronnie Gant down to second base on the balk. Arnish not sure what he did. He's asking for some help from Charlie Williams at second base, but the balk was called by Jerry Crawford. We'll see here if we can pick up what he did. Maybe perhaps just jump. He did not make a step to the bag at first. He just made the spin move. And there's the call by Crawford. You've got to make an obvious step to the base. You cannot jump and turn. And for the first time tonight, the Braves have a runner in scoring position. With one man out and a count of one ball, one strike on Sid Bream. changeup we were talking about. That's a pitch that Pete Harnish didn't have when he first came up to the American League. He threw nothing but fastballs and hard sliders then. Calls it his Brooklyn change. I guess going to school in that neck of the woods at Fordham University. I guess that's why he tagged it that kind of a split finger change up. Ahead in the count one and two. This is downstairs two and two to Sid Breen. Well, that was a good trade for both clubs. Harnish and Finlay coming over along with Kurt Schilling who has since been traded to the Phillies. And Glenn Davis of course. In the cleanup spot now for the Baltimore Orioles. Here's the 2 2 time call just before Harnish was about to unleash. It would be a good deal for both clubs if Glenn Davis will play a few more games for Baltimore this year. I think the Orioles would like to have him for a full season instead of just a month a month and a half that they had him last year. It's a situation here that Sid Breen capitalized on all spring led the club in RBIs put the ball in play only struck out four times in 62 at bats during spring training. He had 14 runs driven in the spring hit high in the air. This won't get the job done. Gonzalez coming in. And having to hold at second is Ronnie Gant, two down. And now it'll take a two out hit from Jeff Blauser. Once again, Harnish going to that high fastball. A hitter, when he sees that high fastball, it's so tough to lay off of it because you get such a good look at it. It's almost on the same plane as your eyes, and you try to get on top of it with the swing, but it's almost impossible. And another pop up results in the second out of the inning. In this game, there have only been two ground ball outs against Pete Harnish. Blauser is struck out and fly to right. No runs, three hits for Atlanta. No runs, two hits for Houston. We're in the top half of inning seven, opening night for both these clubs. I don't know about you, Pete, but I, to me, there are not as many good high ball hitters as there used to be either. With the umpires in both leagues going to the inside chest protector, the strike zone seems to have come down some. They don't call the letter high strike anymore or as much as they used to. And the guys, the hitters, just don't offer at it as much. And as a result, sometimes they can't get on top of it. Yeah, that is kind of a myth in baseball. A lot of people think a high fastball is the easiest ball to hit out of the ballpark, but most hitters will tell you they like the ball down. They can drive a ball down a lot further than they can one way up in the strike zone. 2-0 to count. Two men out. You may be pitching carefully here to, to Blouser with first base open, but keep in mind that maybe the two hardest balls hit off Harnish tonight have come from Greg Olson, and he's on deck. Down at second, Ronnie Gant gets his lead. And the 2-0 pitch on the way to Blauser. He's 3-0 now on Jeff Blauser. Yeah. 
Now a 3 0 pitch on the way. He had the green light. And it's 3 and 1. He got on top of a high one. You often see or hear Bobby Cox referred to as a player's manager. Players like playing for Bobby Cox. One of the reasons is if you're a hitter, he very, very often will give you the green light on 3 0 pitches. And that sometimes is the best pitch you see in any given at bat. All right, if you're going to let a guy swing away 3 and 1, if he's a guy that can put the ball in play consistently, then why not 3 and 0? Oh? I think it has to be a guy, though, that has a pretty good idea of the strike zone. And Jeff Blauser's knowledge of the strike zone has obviously gotten better because he has cut down his strikeouts each year since coming up to the major leagues. Bobby looking on with Steve Lyons, a newcomer on the Braves club this year. Bobby was reminiscing in the dugout before the game about his first opening game in the major leagues 1968 at Yankee Stadium and how intimidating that was for a major league rookie to be in the in the Yankee Stadium before it was renovated. There's ball four to Blauser. And that's the second walk issued by Harnish. Bob Cluck the pitching coach. Out to the mound for a chat with Pete Harnish. Greg Olson, the batter. This may be a little conversation about how to pitch to Olson, who has driven the ball sharply twice, almost to the identical spot in left center field where Luis Gonzalez ran it down each time. What was your first opening day in the major leagues? My first opening day was uh, with the Mariners back in 79. I was told that uh, I probably wouldn't be playing right away. In the, we were playing the Angels. That I'd bide my time, I'd get a chance second day I was in there against Nolan Ryan. Thank you very much. Welcome to the big leagues. Yeah. <laughs> well here's Olsen first and second two down. Bray is trying to break through in a scoreless game. And Harnish delivers and there's a ground ball deep short. Nice play Cedeno. He's got him at second. And Harnish is out of it. The Braves leave a couple of runners. We go to the seventh inning stretch here in Houston. Still scoreless. He's hosting the San Francisco Giants in the opening weekend of baseball in Atlanta. Saturday night, it'll be Budweiser Tomahawk night for the first 35,000 fans. And Sunday, of course, Magnetic Schedule Day and the Earth Day Expo presented by Georgia Power. Tickets call 249-6400 or the 800 number. And of course, the broadcast coming up Thursday night for that home opener, Giants and the Braves right here on TBS at 735. And I understand we may have 160,000 people for that four game series. At your with house? The Giants. That's a bunch. Yes, it is. I remember when it used to be the middle of June before we got to the 160,000 mark. Jeff Bagwell, Pete Incavilia, Ken Caminiti. Do up here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Nothing, nothing game. Incavilia, or I should say Bagwell, 0 for 2, hit into a 5-4-3 double play and struck out. And Glavin's first pitch, good changeup, nothing and one the count. The Braves bullpen up for the first time tonight. The left-hander is Mike Stanton, the right-hander is Marvin Freeman. Here's the one strike to Bagwell, it's outside, one ball, one strike. You know, talking about opening days, I can recall as a, as a youngster growing up in Rochester, New York, they had then and they still have a triple-A baseball team when you used to get the day off from school if you had an opening day ticket. That doesn't happen anymore. Two and one the count now in Bagwell. If you brought a ticket to school in the morning, they always opened up the season during the afternoon. It'd be like a Wednesday afternoon. If you brought a ticket to school in the morning, you were out of there at noon. Resulted in a lot of sellouts. <laughs> Here's the two-one pitch. The let up is low, three and one. the third time tonight that Glavin's gone to a three ball count on a hitter. Here's the three one coming and he lost it. Bagwell leads off the bottom of the seventh with a walk. That's the second walk issued by Glavin. And the reason for the activity in the bullpen is because this is the longest outing for Glavin this spring. He's, his longest outing in spring training was six innings and he may be tiring a little bit. 
So Freeman and Stanton getting ready, and Pete Incavilia, the hitter, he singled back in the second, went down on strikes in the fourth inning. to right center field but Dave Justice has a play out there he waves off Deion Sanders and makes the catch for out number one and that'll bring up Ken Caminiti who is over two well, let's see if Art Howe puts something on here to try to generate a little offense Caminiti can handle the bat a little bit. Got Bagwell at first, and a big hole over on the right side. Might try to play a little hit and run since they haven't had any luck with Glavin thus far tonight. One man out, Bagwell still at first. Glavin throws over. This has never been an easy ballpark for the Atlanta Braves to win, and they had success here last year, winning 13 of 18, but until last year, they had a string of six consecutive years where Houston won the season series, including all nine games two years ago. And eight games one other year. One ball, no strikes, the count on Ken Caminiti. Tom Spencer coaching third for Houston, flashing signs. Glavin goes to first again. One thing Tom can do to the base runner is freeze him just for one count if it is a hit and run play that Hard Howe puts on. That if Caminetti is not able to make contact, gives Olsen a great opportunity to throw him out. It'll be a late jump for Bagwell. Over for a called strike with the changeup. One ball, one strike. Bagwell only stole seven bases last year, so he's not. Too big a threat. Matt Galati relays our pal's signs out to his third base coach. After watching Jimmy Williams flash signs, Tom Spencer's in slow motion. One and one the count. Here's the one one on the way. Two and one. Eighteen double plays on the year. One thing that Art Howe may take into consideration if he puts a runner in motion here to try to save at least one runner. Glavin seems to be working Caminiti away too, which would be kind of working into his hand if he wanted to go to the right side. Still two balls and a strike and Ken Caminiti. Nothing, nothing game, bottom half of the seventh inning. Glavin has held the Astros to two hits. The Braves have managed only three off Pete Harnish. First, again, Bagwell back. Crowd always gets a little impatient with all the throws to first base, but Greg Olson sits behind that plate and says, Thank you very much for keeping that runner close. He's going. The pitch is hit on the ground towards short. Bellyard's only play will be on the first in time. And that would have been a double play if the runner had not been going. Would have been an easy double play. But the pitch appeared to be inside, and it was about all Caminiti could do to handle it was just to put it in play to the left side of the diamond. A lot of times, though, a right-handed hitter, if he gets that inside pitch, can inside out his swing a little bit and fight it off and find the hole on the right side, but not so there. So two men out now with Bagwell down at second. Here's Luis Gonzalez. He struck out in the second. He popped the second in the fifth. Good breaking ball, nothing in one. Gonzalez has not had a very good hack tonight at Glavin's breaking ball.
Now the 0-1 on the way. High in the air, but foul out of play. Nothing in two. On that first swing, you saw Gonzalez step out of the box and kind of shake his head as if to say, man, I haven't come close to hitting that breaking ball of Tom Blavins tonight. And because of that, I would expect Glavin to go back to the breaking ball but throw it off the plate for a ball just to see if he'll chase it. See where Olsen goes. He's going out there in the 0-2. That's just what he did. And Gonzalez laid off at one ball, two strikes. Do they have him set up for something inside? I doubt that they want to go back in because of the lefty. Gonzalez having trouble with that breaker. Here's the one two on the way. Stay with the breaking ball. Little fly ball to shallow right. David Justice waves everybody off. And that's all for Houston in the seventh. They leave a runner down at second. Still scoreless. Through seven from Houston. San Diego four to two tonight. Brett Saberhagen got knocked out early in the Cardinals are leading the Mets in the seventh inning in San Francisco and L.A. about to get underway out on the West Coast. In the American League, New York beat Roger Clemens 4-3. to three. The White Sox are pounding the Angels 7-2 to two early. And the Rangers and Mariners might have another slugfest yet tonight in Seattle. And for complete scores and highlights, tune in to CNN Sports tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern. We move along to the eighth inning, still scoreless, and Jerry Willard's going to pinch hit for Rafael Belliard to start things off here in the eighth inning. Jerry Willard came to spring training camp without a spot on the roster and won himself a spot on the roster for a couple of reasons. Number one, Tommy Gregg and Jeff Treadway, two left-handed bats, went down with injuries. And number two, as a pinch hitter this spring, Willard was four for seven. And he takes a strike in the outside corner, 0-1. Willard had that memorable at-bat in Game 4 of the World Series last year. That sacrifice fly that almost didn't get out there far enough. With Willard urging it along. He couldn't lay off the high fastball. Nothing in two. Well, he's not alone tonight in that category. There have been a lot of guys chasing, chasing that pitch. But Jerry is an excellent low ball hitter. That's not a pitch in his zone. Let's see if Harnish works him right up the ladder here. He's 0-2. And he tried to, but it missed outside with it. One and two. No runs, three hits for Atlanta. No runs, two hits for Houston. You see Mark Lemke loosening up. He was down throwing in the bullpen a moment ago. He'll probably move to second base with Blouser moving over to shortstop. Now one two pitch on the way. Just inside. Two and two. One of the things the hitting coach will try to get his hitters to do in a situation with a high high ball pitcher like Harness is just ignore anything above the belt. Just try to not even offer it anything that's in the eyes. High in the air to shallow right field. Biggio is back in Cavilia in and Cavilia calls him off and puts it away for the out one down. And now Tom Glavin will bat for himself. He has one of Atlanta's three hits tonight, a single back in the third. He's also struck out. Deion Sanders waiting on deck. Look at this. Glavin trying to butt his way on. Foul it back. Well, we've had some great pitching early in the season, haven't we? Rick Sutcliffe, a shutout for the Orioles in his first outing. Doug Graybank, a shutout for the Pirates in his first outing. I thought that was a great story in Baltimore, reading about Sutcliffe giving the ball, the game ball, to Johnny Oates, who he felt really took a chance on him, bringing to Baltimore. And Glavin and Harnish dueling it out here tonight. One ball, one strike on Tom Glavin. Base is empty. Eighth inning, no score. Here's the 1-1. One, one. 
Missing high, two and one. Harnish's success tonight. You're, you're seeing how Jim Palmer pitched his way into the Hall of Fame with a high fastball, getting guys to chase pitches out of the zone. It's two and two now on Tom Glavin. He was a master at tantalizing hitters with a fastball that just was rising just enough that a guy couldn't get on top of it. Two balls, two strikes to Tom Glavin. It's full now, three and two. And now the payoff pitch on the way to Glavin. Ground ball, right side. Biggio can't get to it. Tom Glavin is two for three. That's only the fourth Atlanta hit, and the Braves pitcher, Tom Glavin, has half of them. That let him hit for himself the way he's swinging the bat. And he's getting a <laughs> big early lead in that pitcher's pool, isn't uh -huh. he? Now the batter will be Deion Sanders, who had a single back in the first inning. He's only hit him three at bats. He took a look down at third base coach Jimmy Williams before heading for the batter's box, and the Houston bullpen is going to begin to operate left-hander Al Osuna. And right-hander Joe Baber. Baber, one of the five non-roster players to make the Houston club this year. Doug Jones, Rob Murphy, Denny Walling, Keating Cavillia. Dion swinging lines one down the right field line. It is just foul. And that would have been a home run with these new lower fences. Dion didn't think it was foul. He thought he had one. You're right, Pete, with these shorter dimensions and with the wall, the big wall out of the way. Just a foot to the left, and it's a home run off the screen. Jerry Crawford made the right call. So it just goes as a noisy strike one to Deion Sanders. 0 1 the count. Last year, you had to hit it in the seats down the line for it to be a homer. And that's quite a poke. Even though it's only five feet further back, he had hit the ball a lot further than 330 to get it out of here. Again down the right field line. This time it's going to be fair, bouncing off the wall. Glavin heading for third. Runners will be at second and third. As Deion Sanders delivers the Braves' first extra base hit of the year. Boy, he had two good swings at Pete Harnish that time. And the Braves have runners second and third with only one out. Well, Bobby Cox said that Dion's going to be in the lineup every night against right-handers, and not necessarily because of the suspension to Otis Nixon, but because he has earned it. He had such a good spring. Remember, he hit a triple against the Astros in one of the late spring training games that was really tagged against Butch Henry, a left-handed pitcher. He was doing it against left-handed pitchers and right-handers, and he sets the Braves up here to take the lead. And here's a spot where this guy, Terry Pendleton, came through just about every time last year on his way to an MVP award. Terry tonight 0 for 3. Infield in for Houston. Runners second and third, one down. Braves trying to break through here in the eighth inning. Fouled it back, 0 and 1. One of the things, Pete, about a ball club that may not be going real well offensively, like the Braves have struggled late in spring training, is that when the season starts, you've still got to be good situational hitters. You've got to have key hits when you're put in that position. And not a better guy in the, on the ball club to have up there right now than Pendleton, as you mentioned. Tom Glavin, the runner at third. Deion Sanders, the runner at second. One man out. And a one-strike pitch on the way. Fly ball, right field. That should get the run in. In Cavillia, back waiting. Glavin tagging at third. There's the catch. Dion coming over to third. Glavin scores, and the Braves have finally broken through. As Terry Pendleton delivers once again. 
That's all he was trying to do. Hit a fly ball deep enough to get a run in. And he did just that. It's one nothing Braves. One more high fastball. This time Pendleton was able to get enough on it. Now watch Glavin make sure the ball is caught. He doesn't want to leave early. Took an extra count there before he broke for the plate because it was hit so deep he knew he could score easily. He didn't want to run the risk of being caught leaving the bag too soon. So the Braves have finally broken through. Runner at third with two down for Ronnie Gant, who's one for three. Had a single off Harnish's leg back in the seventh. Ground ball by Caminiti down the left field line. That'll get Deion Sanders home. Gant around first, heading for two. And he'll pull in with a run scoring double. It's two nothing. And finally, the Braves have gotten through on Pete Harnish. One of the dangers of being a high fastball pitcher is that if you just if you get the ball down just a little bit suddenly you're in the hitting zone look where this pitch was at the belt Gant's able to turn on it instead of popping it up and rip it down into the corner ball actually got stuck in the padding but Gonzalez is able to hold him to a double so the Braves who managed only three hits off Pete Harnish over the first seven innings have gotten to him here in the eighth. Two runs are in, three hits in the inning. We're going to get a pitching change made. Casey Candell also going to check in. We'll have a double switch made here. And with David Justice coming to the plate, I imagine we'll see Al Osuna. Candell is going to take over for Luis Gonzalez in left field. Harnish pitches a good ball game, but leaves trailing 2 0. He doesn't look real happy, does he? No, he doesn't. It'll be Al Osuna taking over for Pete Harnish. Casey Candell taking over and left for Luis Gonzalez. He'll be back. Casey Candell, the new left fielder, he'll be batting in the number nine spot. And the new pitcher who will bat in Luis Gonzalez spot, left-hander Al Osuna. Osuna, 6'3", 200-pounder last year with Houston. 7-6, and six, as you look at the rest of his numbers. He had 12 saves, but he also blew 12 save opportunities. One of the young guys that the Astros decided to go with win or lose last year trying to develop some of the young guys. Pete Harnish got nothing to be ashamed of tonight. He pitched a good ball game. But he gets tattooed here in the eighth inning for a couple of runs. He's got to be thinking I'm not going to have another year like this again. Am I all those one nothing games he pitched in last year. He was 12 and 9. He could have very easily been a 15 16 17 game winner. And here he is pitching in opening night 1992 pitching a good one and down two nothing in the eighth. Well think about this inning. He, the inning got started with the pitcher getting a second hit off of him on the night Tommy Glavin and then he made a couple of mistakes with those fastballs. Actually he made three. Deion Sanders almost took one of them out and it was just it just hooked foul but two doubles back to back doubles or a double I should say by Sanders and then the sacrifice fly by Pendleton but he pitched a very good ball game. Here's Justice facing Osuna, runner at second. Two men out, two runs in. Ball one outside. Osuna has a fastball, a screwball, and a slider. Here's the 1 0 on the way. Did he go? No. And the count two and nothing now and David Justice. This may be a good test right here to see how Dave Justice's back feels. The left hander throwing him some breaking stuff. Two and oh and first base open. He may not get anything hard in to hit. It's been a problem for Osuna in his brief major league career. He has little wild streaks. Here's the 2 0 pitch on the way. Ripped foul. Boy, he had a good swing at that one. He made a mistake, got it up yeah. and in. It's two and one. He got the fastball. I don't think I don't think Osuna wanted to put it there though. No. Concerned about his back. Getting some good swings on the inner half of the plate early in the ball game, just as he did there on that high fastball. He has hit four rocket shots uh -huh. fouled on that right field line tonight. It's just the extra stress of trying to reach for a pitch away, the outer half of the plate. It's a little extra strain on his back. Here's the two one. Another one. That's five that he's nailed down there. And it's two and two now on Justice, who might be just about as frustrated tonight as Pete Harnish is. He hit five shots like that, all of them foul. 
Two balls, two strikes. Two nothing. Braves up. We're in the top half of the eighth inning. Here's the 2 2 on the way. Just missed outside of the breaking ball. And it's a full count now, three and two. It almost appears because of those pitches away, it's almost like Justice is right on top of the plate trying to go out and get everything outside and bring it back fair. Osuna out of Stanford University. Here's the 3 2. Sharply hit the right at Biggio. That's it for Justice, and that's it for Atlanta. But the Braves break the scoreless deadlock, scoring two here in the top half of the eighth inning, and they'll take a 2 0 lead to the bottom half. What if you left all your worries? And again, this is the longest outing for him all spring. The one one on the way. It's one and two now on Scott service. Got to run the bases though. Scored the first run. Maybe that rejuvenated him a little bit. The rocking is starting early for Leo Mazzoni this year. <laughs> Here's the one two pitch. Upstairs two and two. Bobby Cox, very proud of the contributions made by all of his coaches. Leo Mazzoni, Clarence Jones, Ned Yost, Jimmy Williams, Pat Corrales. He delegates a lot of responsibility to those coaches. The 2-2 pitch, he got him with a changeup. First strikeout since back in the fifth inning. And that's a half dozen strikeouts tonight for Tom Glavin. And it was with the changeup. When he struck out nine Dodgers about 10 days ago in an outing in spring training, Many of them came with the changeup, and it was in that same location, down and away to the right-handers. The old tantalizer, where it looks so good, but you just can't reach it as a right-handed hitter. Great motion on it. Now an old friend, Rafael Ramirez, into pinch hit for Andujar Cedeno. You know, come to think of it, Ramirez also was a non-roster player this year. He was taken off the 40-man roster by the Astros, invited to camp, and earned himself a, another year with Houston by hitting 324 this spring. And it's quickly 0 and 2 on Ramirez. And he's insurance if uh, Cedeno doesn't do the job at short. Here's some of the non roster guys that made the club Joe Baber, Pete Cavilla, Chris Jones, Doug Jones. Doug's going to be their stopper, Rob Murphy, Rafael Ramirez, and Denny Walling. And that's all for Ramirez. Ball dropped by Olsen, but he'll throw him out at first. And that's the seventh strike out of the game for Tom Glavin. Two down. And here's Casey Candell, who took over in left field when the pitching change was made. Those were his numbers a year ago, and it was just about the same numbers that he turned in this spring at 264 in spring training, playing all over the place, as he always does. Very popular player here in Houston. Yeah, it's tough to take a guy out, out of the lineup that contributed that much. 50 RBIs from your second base spot. But the Astros decided to make the move with Biggio going to second. A ball outside to Casey Candell. My favorite Casey Candell story came when he was at the Montreal Expos. The 1 0 pitch. Little ground ball left side. Nice play. Pendleton. We'll have to tell the Candell story later. Tom Glavin very briskly gets him out 1 2 3. The shutout's intact as we go to inning number 9. 2 0 Atlanta. Can get in 72 hours. I think it looked very simple, but it was not a routine play. Look how he catches this ball behind him, then does the 360 for the out. Nice play. And as we go to the ninth inning, two nothing. Brian Hunter is going to pinch hit for Sid Bream against the left-hander Alosuna, and that'll bring Art Howe out. We may get Joe Baver into the game to face the right-hand hitting Brian Hunter. You got a right-hand batter Jeff Blauser due up next, followed by another right-hander Greg Olson. So that'll be it for Osuna. 
And Joe Baber, another former Brave, makes his way into the ball game for the Astros. Baber takes over for Osuna, and he'll be facing Brian Hunter right after this. Brian Hunter, who really began to hit the ball the last week or so of spring training, takes the first pitch low and away, ball one. Hunter pinch hitting for Bream. What a big contribution he made to the Braves' 1991 miracle season. That's the palm ball to count one ball, one strike on Hunter. One of the things Baver has a tendency to do, though, with that palm ball is throw it too many times in succession, and he can't figure out why the hitters are able to adjust to it when he throws it three times in a row. And in fact, Art Howe talking about how they've been working with Joe trying to get him to use his fastball a little bit more. Here's the 1-1. One -one. There's the fastball. Popped it up. Let's see if Service will have a play back near the screen. He won't. And it's 1-2. and two. We were talking about Casey Candell, that last at bat. When he played with the Montreal Expos in 1987, he hit one home run. It just barely cleared the right field wall. The Expos then went on the road. Well, in Olympic Stadium in Montreal, some of those upper deck shots, they've got stars on seats where Willie Stargell's hit him, where Mike Schmitz hit him. When Casey Candell got back off the road trip, there was a star in that seat just above the right field fence <laughs> where that one home run went. Who's going to take this one in the middle of the diamond? It is Biggio. And Hunter's retired. I don't, so, know, why, I don't know what I'm laughing at. It. Just put stars on top of the fence where mine would bounce <laughs> if they got over. Well, here's Jeff Blauser who has struck out, flat out, and walked. Two nothing Atlanta, ninth inning. Due up in the bottom of the ninth for Houston, the top of their order: Biggio, Finley, and Bagwell. And since we've moved into the ninth inning now, the setup people have sat down out in the Braves bullpen, and Alejandro Pena. He is beginning to loosen up if Glavin encounters any ninth inning trouble. It's one and one now in Blouser. And this is outside two and one. Looks like Jeff Blouser has closed his stance a little more this year than it was last year. His hands are so quick, Pete, that there's really no reason for him not to close up a little bit. He can always adjust to the pitch inside and turn on it as quick as he is. Probably doing that just to get a little extra plate coverage. Baber behind now, three and one. And he loses him. Down to first with a walk goes Blauser. That's the third walk issued by Astro Pictures. And it brings up Greg Olson. Hitless in three at bats tonight, but we told you last time up how hard he hit the ball the first two times up against Pete Harness. Both of them run down in left center by Luis Gonzalez. With Baver's palm ball, it's almost one of those situations where you go to the plate not looking for a fastball at all. You look for the palm ball, and if he accommodates you, you're that much better off theory behind what the Astros are trying to get him to do is set it up with the fastball. A lot of hitters might go up there and take three straight fastballs. That's how much he uses it. When he was coming up in the Cardinals organization, Joe Baver reached AAA with Louisville. And that palm ball was such an effective pitch for him. Most of the opposing managers thought it was a curveball, and when they took that manager's poll at the end of the year, he was voted the relief pitcher with the best curveball, which he doesn't throw. The runner going, Blauser, and he is going to be out of second. Good throw by Service, Biggio, on the receiving end. Applies the tag on Blauser for out number two. We talked about Tobinsy's strong throwing arm. Well, Service puts one right on the bag here. Got a good pitch to throw on, down and away. And Blauser's 0 for 1 on the year in the stolen base column. Good throw. So service guns down Blauser. Two men out. A 1-0 count on Greg Olson with the bases empty. Right back where it came from. Base hit for Greg Olson. 
That is the seventh Atlanta hit of the night. And now Mark Lemke will bat for the first time. Mark could throw that perhaps saved a run for Mr. Baver there too. I guess Olsen was due that hit though. And after hitting the ball hard twice and having a couple of nice plays made on him by Gonzalez in left field, he was due for a hit tonight. Lemke hit 196 in spring training. Didn't play much the last week because of that hamstring. And takes a strike in the outside corner, nothing in one. Those are the numbers he compiled last year, but those numbers totally forgotten about when postseason play began. Playoffs and World Series would have been the World Series MVP if the Braves had won that seventh game. His bat went to the Hall of Fame for hitting those three triples in the World Series. Good stop by service there. One ball, one strike. Two nothing Atlanta, ninth inning. Braves about hit the Astros, seven two. And Tom Glavin needs just three more outs to beat Houston for the first time in his career after suffering eight consecutive losses to the Astros. the palm ball that looked like a curveball. That's what we were talking about before. Two and one. Well, let's see if these National League hitters that are used to Baber like Lemke. Let's see if they look for that pitch and try to stay back. That'll make it into the seats. Two and two now on Mark Lemke. Crowd tonight of 25,000 318. That's a little bit under what the Astros were hoping for tonight. They were hoping to get a crowd of a little over 30,000. Normally, as a hitter, you like to look fastball and then adjust when the count's even or if you're behind in the count just to protect the plate. But for Baver in the past, it's been that you could look for that palm ball and then just try to fight off the fastball. Now the 2 2 on the way to Lemke. That palm ball almost sailed over everybody's head. 3 and 2. That reaction because of that last pitch. Mm -hmm. Almost got away from him. He almost threw that one to the screen. But if I'm a hitter there now, I, the 3 and 2, I've got to look for the fastball. Two outs. He may get me with his palm ball, but I want to jump on his fastball here. And down to first with a walk goes Lemke. Second walk of the inning issued by Joe Baver. So it's Lemke at first, Olsen at second, and here's Tom Glavin, who not only has pitched a gym tonight, allowing the Astros only two hits through eight innings, but he's also picked up two hits himself, two for three. A pair of singles. He came across with the first Atlanta run of the year, scoring on the sack fly by Terry Pendleton in the eighth inning. Rob Murphy heading down to the Houston bullpen. <laughs> That's respect when you're when you're a pitcher. That is respect when they have to go out and talk to the pitcher before you step into hit. And you know Glavin is going to let all the other pitchers Absolutely. know about this trip to the mound tomorrow. He has, a, got, he has got him scared. I get a couple look, of knocks. Look at that smile. Uh -huh. You know what's going through his mind. They get a couple of knocks. They get a left-handed relief pitcher up in the bullpen for me. They make a trip to the mound. Yes, you will hear about that after the game tonight. <laughs> Doug Harvey out to the mound saying, hey, guys. In spite of his two hits, it is still the pitcher at the plate. Avery and by like a couple of guys who, whose ears will be a little red tomorrow. <laughs> First and second with two outs. That caught the corner, nothing in one. It's a ball and a strike now on Tom Glavin. 
There's so many pitchers, though. You see them get in the box, and you know they can't hit without even seeing them swing the bat. They don't hold it right. They don't stand right. He's got a bad stance. Glavin looks like he can hit. One ball, one strike to Glavin. Two down. They're pitching him carefully, too, aren't they? Yes, they are. He will also mention that after the game. Two and one to count. There are your runners, Lemke and Olson. And the 2 1 delivery. Taken for a strike, 2 and 2. Here's the 2 2 on the way. Look out. I'll tell you what, he didn't have much time to get out of the way of that one. One of the dangers of sitting in the front row. It remains two and two. I guess he's all right. That's out of play. It stays two balls, two strikes, and Glavin. And too many of those foul balls injuring people this spring. A couple of nasty cases in Arizona at the new ballpark at Scottsdale. Now again, the 2-2 pitch on the way to Glavin, taken low for a ball. It's full now, and the pitcher 3-2. and two. Oh, He's making him work, too. Now he's got him where he wants him. 3-2, and two, runners going. Give me the fastball. Bounce one back through the middle for another base hit and an RBI. That's the only thing he doesn't have tonight is that ribby. The runners will be going on this 3-2 pitch. There they go, the 3-2, line drive, deep left center field. Finley is going to get there, though. A good at bat for Tom Glavin, but he's out number three. The Braves have one more mile to go here in Houston. 2-0 Atlanta after eight and a half. It's standing for the shutout in his first win ever against the Houston Astros. 2-0 Braves will go to the bottom of the ninth. And a reminder that tomorrow night, the Atlanta Braves and Houston Astros will be on Sports South at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then on Thursday, TBS again for the home opener. San Francisco Giants will be in Atlanta taking on the Braves 7.35 Thursday night right here on TBS. Brian Hunter's taken over at first base. Braves actually trying to snap a couple of long streaks of lack of success with this Houston club Tom Glavin as we've mentioned a couple of times 0 and 8 lifetime he's trying to beat him for the first time ever the Braves are also opening the season with the Houston Astros tonight for the eighth time and in seven previous opening games of the Astros either in Houston or in Atlanta the Braves have never won so that's another streak that could come to an end if Glavin can get him out here in the ninth inning it took him a while to get on the board but again it goes back to the timely hitting if even if you're struggling at the plate as a team if you can just bunch some hits and get yourself in a situation where you can deliver a run and capitalize on that, you're still going to win a few ball games with this pitching staff and with this defense. And that's what the Braves did tonight with Pendleton's sacrifice fly and then the, the run scoring double by Gant. And if any trouble starts, there's help ready in the bullpen. Right-hander Alejandro Pena, left-hander Mike Stanton. Both working out there. Here's Biggio, who's 0 for 3. He has flied to right, grounded out to short, and into a force play. A ball and no strikes. The count in Biggio. Here's the 1 0. 2 0. Greg Olson noticed something right away. Glavin watching him warm up this inning just seems to be almost like I don't want to say he's just going through the motions because that sounds like he's just kind of loosey-goosey not his concentration isn't there 
it's there, but he doesn't seem to have the same zip on his fastball that he had earlier. And well, as you mentioned, he never worked longer than six right. innings in a spring training game. He hasn't thrown that many pitches. No, he's he? only 93 pitches, and 62 of them have been strikes. And he throws another strike. It's two and one. Steve Finley will follow, then Jeff Bagwell. Here's the 2-1 to Biggio, thinking about Bunning, taking a strike outside corner. And it's 2-2 two and two now. Biggio got the pitch he wanted to if he was trying to push it down the first baseline. He got a pitch out over the plate. In fact, it caught the outside corner. He gave up on a little too soon. So it's an even count now, 2-2 two and two on Biggio. He got him. Lavin records his eighth strikeout. He came right back after falling behind 2-0 to Craig Biggio. Watch this ball move away from Biggio, too. That's some good tail. It might have been a ball. But because of the called strike for strike two that was on the corner, Biggio had to guard the plate. He couldn't reach that one. It's almost like you pitch up the ladder. You do the yeah. same thing on the outside corner. Just keep pushing it out, pushing it out, see if they'll still chase it. Here's Finley at a single back in the first inning. He takes a strike going one. Two nothing Atlanta. Bottom half of the ninth inning one out. Lavin trying to become the third pitcher in the major leagues to pitch an opening day shutout. Finley missed it nothing in two. Terry Pendleton's really playing him in tight or was until the count went to 0 and 2 because he didn't want Finley getting aboard with it by dropping one down the third baseline. That may have been what Terry told Glavin just before that pitch that he had the third baseline covered. He was very close to Finley. Now an 0-2 pitch on the way. Did he go? Yes. Jerry Davis rings him up. Steve Finley is strikeout victim number nine of Tom Glavin. And that's out number two in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Look at this pitch. Look at the target by Olsen. Again, a little off the plate. But Finley trying to guard the plate, offers at it, and he offers just enough for Jerry Davis to ring him up. He tried to pull it back, but he went around. So the last hope for the Astros is Jeff Bagwell, who's hit into a double play, struck out, and walked. A little ground ball foul, the count 0 and 1. Tom Glavin picking up where he left off last year when he won that Cy Young Award. And picking up in the strikeout department, too. He struck out 192 a year ago. He's got nine tonight. And he's ahead in the count, nothing and two on Jeff Bagwell. And his career high was 12 strikeouts, Pete, last year. But that was in midseason, June 19th at Philadelphia. And racked up the dozen. Now an 0-2 pitch to Bagwell. Just missed outside. One ball, two strikes. Here's the one-two pitch on the way. High fly ball, shallow right field. This should do it. Dave Justice in fair territory. He's got it, and Tommy Glavin has finally beaten the Houston Astros. A two-hit masterpiece for Glavin, striking out nine. And the Braves have won their season opener. 2-0 over the Houston Astros. We'll be back with the totals right after this. Beers, because some days are better than others. By the official airline of the Atlanta Braves, Delta. We love to fly, and it shows. And by Holiday Inn. Stay with someone you know. Call 1-800-HOLIDAY or your travel agent for reservations. The defending National League champion Atlanta Braves get started on the right foot tonight here in Houston. They blank the Astros two to nothing. The totals on the ball game for Atlanta two runs and seven hits. No errors. They left eight men on base and for Houston no runs only two hits. There were no errors and they left three men on base winning pitcher in the ball game Tommy Glavin one and oh and Pete Harnish takes the loss first start of the year. He is 0 and one attendance tonight here at the Astrodome thirty four thousand seven hundred and sixty one. 
Our Holiday Inn player of the game tonight, obviously, is Tommy Glavin, and what a night he had. Glavin goes the distance. Nine innings, so it's the beautiful two-hit shutout. He walked two batters. He struck out nine. He mixed a, all of his pitches well tonight. Good fastball. He's throwing strikes. Curveball change up and two for four with two singles, and he scored the first run of the ball game. Scores of other games tonight. First of all, in the National League, Cubs won their first game of the year, four to three over Philadelphia. Cincinnati gets on the win column with a four to two win over San Diego. St. Louis bomb Brett Saberhagen and the Mets nine to two tonight in St. Louis. And after three innings of play in Los Angeles, no score between the Giants and the Dodgers. In the American League, the Yankees clip Boston and Roger Clemens four to three. The White Sox continue to hit the ball. They are ahead of California nine to four and Texas has taken an early lead over the Mariners in the third inning two to nothing. Once again our final score two nothing the Braves winning their opening game over the Houston Astros tomorrow night Braves and Astros will wrap this series up that game will be on Sports South in the Southeast beginning at 830 Ernie Johnson and Chip Carey will have it for you. We'll be back with you on Thursday night for the home opener between the San Francisco Giants and the Atlanta Braves. Steve Avery's first start of the year, 735 Eastern Time Thursday on TBS. Appropriately enough, the next movie coming up on TBS right after our broadcast tonight is Walking Tall with Joe Don Baker. We hope you'll stay tuned for that. For Joe Simpson, for Don Sutton, for Skip Carey, and for our entire TBS crew, Pete Van Weeren from the Astrodome, where the final tonight was the Braves 2 and the Astros nothing. So long, everyone.